Hi, this is Samantha Alvarez, and this video is my process to share with you how I became an Estonian e-resident and why and what the benefits are. So I'll tell you what I have do been doing up until now, where the problem came up, how I decided on Estonian e-residency, and what I'm going to do from here. First of all, I apologize for the noise. I'm in a, an airport lounge in Prague. I'm traveling from Riga, Latvia to Lisbon, Portugal, and I have I think six hours in this airport, so I decided to put myself into a uh, spot, but it turns out a bunch of people came up just as I was starting to do this with their kids, who were very lovely, but make a lot of noise, bless their hearts. Uh, so I am traveling right now. I just did the Estonian e-residency about two or three days ago, and I put it up on Facebook, and I got a ton of responses uh, privately and publicly of people asking how I did it what the process was like and what exactly happened. So I decided that rather than wait for the perfect place to do this, I'm just going to do it now. So currently I do business as a limited liability corp or an LLC in the US. I am a US citizen and my business is incorporated in Arizona where I was a resident for five years before I started traveling abroad. Uh, I've been traveling for the past three and a half years. I have lived in about a dozen countries and have visited about 30 countries during this time period. And I have earned money doing a bunch of different things in a bunch of different ways. Um, currently, my biggest uh, income source is through sales and sales coaching. And I have I recognized all of that income in my U.S. Uh, company in my US bank account and I currently bank with Chase. And uh, so the problem with this, so why not continue doing exactly what I'm doing now, right? The problem was that about 70% of my income is in euros from European countries. So I get about 30% in USD or other currencies and about 70% in euros. So the only way I have to accept money in euros right now is through PayPal. I previously had a, a payment processor with Authorize.net. I had problems with them because they, um, they had trouble recognizing currencies other than US dollars, and I, it was quite a mess. So I ended up canceling that after two months, I think, and just went with PayPal. Uh, PayPal takes a 3% cut as a fee on all money that you collect and also between 3 and 5% in a foreign exchange fee. They don't call it a fee, it just turns out that they don't use the best foreign exchange rate that you might think that they would. So I ended up losing between 6 and 8% of all of the money that I was making. So if I was making, you know, a thousand euros from something, I would lose uh, between 60 and 80 euros, which is about 80 or 100 dollars on every thousand uh, dollars that I would make, or thousand euros that I would make, which was quite frustrating. And I've been doing this for years. And for the past year and a half or so, 70-75% of my income has come from uh, Europe and in euros, and I'm losing this money every time. So I looked into different solutions and I looked into different ways I could do it, and I settled on Estonian e-residency. The reason for that is that Estonia created an e-resident they created in 2014 they decided to make a, a residency specifically for people who wanted to be e-residents and bank and have a business within Estonia it's it's designed for digital nomads exactly like me uh, so I looked into a number of different things and I decided to go with e-residency and Estonia so the first step in the process was finding other people who were doing exactly what I wanted to do so I started reading different articles um, of people doing uh, e-residency uh, the uh, and, and also several of my friends started applying for e-residency one of those friends Michelle Hetzlaff is a German who uh, started applying for her e-residency and she uh, recently wrote an article about that on medium uh, and I was going through the e-residency process about a month behind her so she's about a month ahead of me in the process and is a little bit further along and I've been working with her and, and getting help from her on how exactly to do it. So I decided to go with e-residency. I decided to go with Leap In, which is a, an Estonian startup which helps uh, location independent entrepreneurs set up their company and their e-residency with Estonia. So the e-residency itself required no help from anybody. So uh, maybe I'll talk about that first. So to get the e-residency, all I had to do was go to 
the uh, e-resident government site for Estonia, which I've got up right here. And from here, you can read more about the e-residency. Uh, but in order to become an e-resident, you can click on this right here, become an e-resident. And that will bring up the some information, what you can do, why you might want to do it. And to apply, all you have to do is click right here. This application form and 100 euros, which is about $115, $110-115, based on current exchange rates, those are US dollars, is fill out this application form. And as you can see, it's not super intense, it's not super difficult. Uh, you do have to say what it is that you want to do. And then you proceed, and then you pay 100 euros, and then you wait. And I waited another I think it was about a week and a half after that, maybe, yeah, about 10 days. And then I got an email saying that my e-residency had been approved and that the next step was they were going to do some research and they were going to uh, issue my card. So about seven days later, I got another email from the police saying that my card had been issued. When you do this application for residency, you get to choose where you're going to pick up your card. So if you are not any, you can pick up your card in, in uh, Tallinn in Estonia, which is what I did, and I'll talk about that more in a minute. Uh, but you can pick up your e-residency card anywhere there is a, an Estonian embassy. Uh, and that's probably the easiest way to do it if you're not in or near Estonia, is to, is to pick up the card before you come to Estonia. But I chose to pick up the card in Estonia. So they said, okay, your card has been issued. It's at the police station in, at the main police station in Tallinn and, you know, come on over. At this point, I started working with, uh, so I had my e-residency my e card, which was approved. And now I started talking to Leapin. So Leapin is a startup. It's an Estonian startup that helps uh, online entrepreneurs and other people become Estonian e-residents. So they do everything for you. So the bookkeeping, the accounting, the taxes, the incorporation, all of the fees, sorry, all of the paperwork, which is generally very easy and there's not a lot of it. They take care of everything. Uh, I believe to, so the e-residency itself was 100 euros. The, uh, to establish the business is about 160 euros, but I believe those are all government fees. I don't, I don't know that Leapin gets any of that. What Leapin actually gets is they charge 50, 50 euros per month, between 50 and 100 euros per month. You, the average is around 80 euros per month, which is about 95 or 100 dollars per month to run everything for you. The, from the taxes to the bookkeeping to the accounting to you have a permanent address there so you can receive your business mail there. Everything to do with your business is taken care of there. Uh, and they take care of the taxes as you, uh, as you incur them. It's not like you have to not understand what's happening and wait until, you know, the end of the year to figure out what's going on. They take care of everything for you and let you know exactly what's going on. So I sent a bunch of emails back and forth to leap in for the, to have them help me figure everything out. Whenever I had a question about the police problems or the bank problems that I had later, I shouldn't say problems, but questions that I wasn't really sure what was going on, uh, Leapin was extremely helpful. Same thing with the police. I had a couple of questions for the police uh, a couple of different times about how to pick up the card and they were extremely helpful. Uh, they answered the phone when I called, I, I know this sounds silly to say this, maybe to some of you, but they answered the phone within four rings at the police station at Leapin and at LHV Bank, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, I, I was very, very happy with all of the uh, communication around this. So I sent back and forth maybe 30 or 40 emails asking Leapin exactly how this process all, all works. So, all right, so at this point, I. Uh, my card had been issued and I had to wait about another two weeks until I got to uh, Tallinn. So I flew to Riga because I have a friend who lives in Riga and I stayed in Riga, Latvia, which is about a four hour bus ride away from Estonia. And I then uh, hopped on. This is the friend who is the EU resident who was applying at the same time as me. So we actually went to Tallinn together to pick up our cards and to start the rest of the process. So. Uh, last Tuesday, we hopped on a bus from Riga in the morning, and at 
6 a.m. or something like that, 6.30. Got to Riga around 11 o'clock in the morning because it was a four and a half hour bus ride. Sorry, got to Tallinn at 11 o'clock in the morning. Left the bus station and headed off to the police station. The first stop was to pick up our e-resident card. So we went to the police station, took a number. It actually felt like a bank or a really well-run DMV. So we got there, asked a security guard for help. He showed us where to go and uh, we pulled our number. And by the way, neither of us speak any Estonian. My friend is Latvian. She speaks Latvian and Russian, but no Estonian. And I don't speak any Estonian either. She's taught me one word of Estonia while we were there, Aita, which means thank you. At least I hope I said that right. So we, the security guard helped us and we waited for about 15 minutes. They had very comfortable sofa chairs for people to sit on. There was probably 50 people in the police station. They called us up and I gave them my passport and told them that I was here to pick up my e-resident card. Uh, they did some paperwork, went and got my card with my little blue resident box with how to use the card and handed that to me. I walked over to where my friend was picking up her card, waited another five minutes while she was doing hers, and then we walked out of the police station with our cards. Here is the actual ID card that I received. This is my Estonian ID card. Uh, I can use this. They give you a little thing that you can plug it into a USB slot so you can sign documents digitally. And this is what I will actually use from now on to confirm my identity as an Estonian e-resident. And here is the site for the police station. Uh, so polizei.ee .ee is the Estonian uh, web address like .com, and I also wanted to show you a picture of the Polizei. So this is a picture of the police station. We went to the Pina station, uh, P Pina station, to pick up our cards. So we walked in this door right where this uh, guy is walking in right here. After the police station, we went to have some lunch at an organic cafe, which was incredible. So these are fish cakes. Latvia, is, are, Estonia and Latvia are famous for their seafood. So we got some hummus with some kind of rice cake type thing. This is a green smoothie, which was incredible, a uh, vegetable smoothie. And these are fish cakes on cucumber in uh, olive oil. After we went and had lunch, we walked around Estonia a little bit. Estonia is very, let's see, I got a couple of pictures of Estonian buildings here. Estonia was, uh, Tallinn was largely destroyed in one of the recent wars, I believe it was in World War II, but most of Tallinn was destroyed. So a lot of the stuff, a lot of the buildings and architecture there is quite new. Uh, it is very, it feels very modern, uh, as do most of the places where I went. It, it feels like a mix of old world, like these, these walls kind of feel almost medieval, and then the glass buildings in the background, and many of the buildings have this kind of glass with blocky, not quite so much Soviet architecture, D definitely does feel Baltic. Uh, but this is, this is how Estonia looks while you're walking around. So from the bank, sorry, from the cafe, we went to LHV Bank. And we were there to meet with Maria. Maria Sina. Uh, that was a little bit difficult to say at LHV Bank. The reason that I chose LHV Bank was they have a direct connection. They have a, they have a direct application connection between LeapIn and LHV. There are ways that you can open a bank account in Estonia without having to go to Tallinn. There's a Finnish tech startup called Holvi, and there are two other banks in Tallinn that you can go with that, that you do not have to actually come to Tallinn. Those banks require a significantly higher monthly charge. With LHV, all I have to pay is two euros a month to have a debit card. Otherwise, there's no fees on the business account. Uh, and I was willing to go to Tallinn because I was going to Riga anyway. So it was just a four hour bus ride and the price is much cheaper in the long term. So I ended up at LHV Bank. Uh, my friend and I walked in, told them that we were there to pick up our, uh, to, to sign paperwork and to show them who we were for our bank account. And they took our identity documents 
and had a, asked us to have a seat. We waited again for maybe 10 minutes in a, a library. They actually had a library. And so we were looking at a bunch of books. We found uh, Ramit Sethi's I Will Teach You to Be Rich. And uh, uh, by the way, this entire process was in English. So we, we don't speak any Estonian. And all three of the places where we went, as well as the cafe where we ate, uh, we were able to get by just fine in, in English 100%. Uh, Maria is at LHV Bank is uh, specialized, or I don't think specialized is quite the right word, but she works specifically with e-residents, and there are just a couple of people at LHV Bank who are, I'm laughing, the kids next to me. Uh, she works specifically with e-residents, as do a couple of other people at LHV Bank. I did have to call LHV Bank at one point because I was confused about how I was going to get my debit card. And uh, the person who I talked to on the phone was not well informed. They were very nice and very helpful, but they did not have the right information. So I tied. I sat down with the LHV representative, with Maria and my friend. We were able to see her at the same time. We signed some paperwork. We waited for maybe 10 minutes. We were in the office for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, mostly because I had a bunch of questions. It probably would have only been five minutes if I had not had a bunch of questions. So the way that it works is because we are working with LeapIn, uh, this startup, and they're directly connected to LHV, when when I signed the paperwork, because I picked up my card and signed the paperwork for the bank on the same day, my debit card won't be ready for 10 to 14 business days, so two to three weeks. It takes LHV seven to 10 days to approve the opening of the bank account. They only do it in a committee, which only meets every, I'm not quite sure how often, but it takes them an average of seven business days to approve an account. And after that, they will uh, create the debit card and send it to you. They will only send it within Estonia. So the way that this works for people like myself who are only in Estonia for one day is they will issue the card and send it to LeapIn. Send it to the LeapIn's office in Tallinn and then LeapIn will call me or email me and say, hey, where are you in the world? I can send you your debit card now, which is perfect. So I had contacted the bank pri previously to ask them how this worked and they'd given me incorrect information. Then later I contacted LHV, sorry, I contacted LeapIn and they gave me the correct information that the bank will send the card to LeapIn and then LeapIn will mail it to wherever I am in the world, which is gonna be Lisbon, which is where I'm gonna be for the next six weeks after I get off the plane later today. So that was my LHV experience, it was excellent. We left LHV, the bank, hopped on the uh, bus, I think it was, yeah, we hopped on one of the buses. Uh, we got a bus card for the day, by the way. It was uh, two euros for the card and three euros for the day pass. So for five euros each, we had a day pass and we did all of this travel by bus. So the police station was about a 45 minute bus ride, maybe an hour, bus ride from the center and then we hopped on the bus back from the police station to uh, the organic cafe, which was right next to the bank. From the bank, we walked to the, no, we hopped on a bus that took about 15 minutes to the Leap In uh, station, no, the office, the Leap In uh, headquarters. And we, at about 3.30 in the afternoon, we walked, we got off the bus and we walked to the Leap In office had a little bit of trouble finding it, but we eventually got there and went up to the sixth floor and introduced ourselves. And it was really cool. It was a very small team. It's their uh, sales team and marketing team and onboarding team. And then they have another office in another Estonian city of Tartu where they do the actual the operations team where once you're onboarded and you're actually working with LeapIn that they're helping you with your taxes and your all of those kinds of things. So I met Ingrid, who I had sent probably 30 or 40 emails with, and sat down with her. They had there was there was no requirement to actually go to their office or meet them, but I wanted to because I wanted to put a face to a name and an email. They were usually responding within 30 to 60 minutes of whenever I would send an email, business hours of course, but consistently responding. They don't offer a phone number on their website, or at least I couldn't find it, but I never found that as a lack. Uh, there was one time when I wished I could call them and I realized that they'd been so helpful. I just emailed them and she got back to me within like 15 or 20 minutes. So we went to the office, 
sat down with Ingrid, asked them some questions, and then we took off. So at that point, we were essentially done. Uh, we had to wait for the card to be issued, and uh, we had to yeah, we had to wait for the card to be issued, which was going to take a couple of weeks, and there was really no reason for us to stick around in Tallinn. Uh, Leapin recommends that you stay for three days. If you are coming from somewhere else and you need to stay there, that's quite reasonable. We didn't, we were, we were around Tallinn. Uh, my friend had been there 10 or 12 times, so there wasn't a really big excitement to be there. It has a nice old town, Tallinn. We really enjoyed the cafe culture. We went to an Indian restaurant on our way back to the bus station to go back to Riga. And it was quite a nice city. And if you are coming from, you know, somewhere far away and you're going to stay in Tallinn, it's worth staying a couple of days. So that's where I am in the process. So I have not been approved for my bank account yet. I have not been uh, I've not finished establishing the business. I may, if, if the interest continues to be this high, I would be happy to do another video. Uh, when I get those parts done, let me know if you'd like me to do another video about the actual incorporation of the business process and how I start using my business. So I will be uh, incorporating a business a, a similar to what I have in the US, a limited liability corporation that is in process. Now that I have my card, I will be able to digitally prove my Estonian e-residency identity and create my business. And then I will be on my way to accepting uh, accepting euros with a bank transfer with zero fees, which I'm very excited about. So I hope this was helpful. Please let me know if you have any other questions. I'd be happy to either create another video or answer your questions in the comments. And also, if you'd like to see me do another video when I get a little bit further along in the process, feel free to let me know. And thanks for watching.